Hi, welcome back. It's Cole. Um, I'm coming to talk to you guys today about the tubal ligation that I had a year ago. Um, this whole process started by my husband and I trying to conceive for many years with no luck. Um, and then we started going to Boston and I had found out um, a while ago that both my tubes were fully clogged. Um, the doctor told me I was never going to have children on my own that he recommended cutting both my tubes out and um, I didn't know how I felt about that so I waited um, a couple years and finally found Boston and years later and born again Christian um, we went and saw Dr. Steyer at Boston Fertility and comes to find out I have one tube that is open and one tube that is fully clogged um, he told me that the reason why I wasn't getting pregnant was probably all the um, fluid that was clogged in my right fallopian tube was probably killing the egg or the sperm before they had a chance to meet each other. So if I got rid of that, that hopefully I would be able to get pregnant on my own. Um, so I'm going to show you some pictures of the pictures that he showed me. Um, if you're grossed out by pictures drop this fast forward I'm not trying to gross anyone out I'm just trying to show you um, what I got to see of what had happened so this is the picture um, that is my fallopian tube still inside me he wanted to show me a picture of it and this is the picture of my fallopian tube um, after it was cut out I thought this was like a tumor or something, but apparently he described it to me as stagnant fluid buildup. I couldn't believe how bad it was. But With the tubal ligation, I was supposed to get it done um, in and out procedure and laparoscopically. And when I woke up from the anesthesia, which took a long time, um, they told me that they ended up having to do a c-section cut they were not able to go through my belly button so I had to stay overnight so that was a little tough but um, it was hard to heal c-sections I feel for all you ladies that have had c-sections I was not even able to get in and out of my bed I had to sleep on my couch for a little while because my bed was too high and trying to use those stomach muscles so now I have a c-section scar so that's interesting to explain when I don't have any children, but hopefully, God willing, we will get pregnant soon and be able to say, hey, the C-section scar, we have a whole story about it. I definitely believe that God worked miracles and I have one open fallopian tube, um, but I have gone through three cycles of um, IUI with no success, one cycle of IVF and um, we didn't have any success with that so today is the 27th on the 29th we are doing a frozen embryo transfer we are going to be transferring to uh, I find out tomorrow what time I'm going in I decided that this time I want to try lying down and not moving at all and our um, IVF center they have you go from the bed that you're laying on when you get implanted move yourself over to um, a recliner and lay down for about 15 minutes and then you're able to leave well from the videos that I've watched from all you guys I've seen a lot of people not using any stomach muscles not laying down whatsoever I mean I'm sorry um, laying down and not getting up for um, some people say an hour 45 minutes um, not using their stomach muscles right after um, to transfer um, so I am going to really um, ask the doctor if that's something I could do we have a two-hour drive back home with no traffic so I'm going to see if I can at least lie down for 45 minutes I'm sure they should be accommodating to me um, I don't know I feel like maybe if I do bed rest this time that hopefully it'll help the embryos implant um, what do I have to lose I guess um, I just want this to work and I will do anything I can and if that means staying on bed rest and so be it I'm ready for it um, we've gone through a lot it's been it's been it's been a hard road um, 
all the shots and the hormones and then you see all your friends getting pregnant and you know um, a lot of people that don't go through this um, don't even know and a lot of people that aren't going through this probably don't watch these videos because it, I mean it's a, it's a lot to take in it's a lot of different meds I mean I don't think anyone can understand how many hormones I'm injecting every day or anyone that's going through this you are I can't even stand myself right now I am so hormonal with everything that I'm taking and um, this time the um, shots are hurting the progesterone shots are hurting a lot more than they did last cycle um, but I'm lucky I'm only on one shot um, and I was on three last time so I can't complain about only being on one right now um, but the patches and the um, the suppositories uh, it's it's a lot of hormones I feel like I'm going crazy I am so tired and so hungry oh my gosh I can eat anything I'm hungry all the time it's ridiculous I'm just so hungry um, but I'm sure everyone that goes through these IVF meds knows how hungry you can be um, so hopefully I won't gain a million pounds and um, like I said our embryo transfer is on this Monday the 29th so um, I'm just praying that these little embryos take this time and we'll be on a new road and a new path new journey to um, this whole IVF cycle so thanks all for watching God bless and baby dust to all you TTCers lots of love